Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Mirza Beg. I am the Chief Technical Officer of Live Med Telehealth. Live Med Telehealth is a full service, tech enabled virtual healthcare company. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but today we're talking about solving rural healthcare's dilemma. Uh, and so thanks for joining all. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a huge challenge in the, in the space right now. Uh, we're purely focused on this. Uh, it is uh, something that we have learned a lot about. Uh, and so we're here to share those challenges, share those insights, share how we, uh, our approach to, to solving the problem, as well as share with you some of our successes uh, so far that have been the outcomes of some of our efforts. Uh, today, I'm joined by our panel of, uh, uh, first of all, our CEO and co-founder, Dr. Samer Siddiqui. He is a board certified internal physician uh, and he has a passion uh, for innovative healthcare as well as he is a closeted tech enthusiast and so that drives and motivates him uh, to actually establish and come to work every day and solve uh, our challenges. And alongside with him is Jonathan Goldberg, our Chief Information Officer and co-founder. He has spent his career uh, in hospital uh, systems uh, as well as tech startups as well as startups right now. Uh, and he has spent his career in transforming operations across hospital systems and has spent a large time um, investing in innovation, operationalizing his entire uh, go-to-market plan, uh, and he's seen tremendous success and he brings with him a wealth of experience. With that, for our packed audience, let's share and level set what Live Med Telehealth is. So Dr. Siddiqui, can you share with us a little bit about Live, Tele Live Med Telehealth? Sure, thank you for that amazing introduction. Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, the coffee has not hit yet, but it should be soon. Um, so I'm Dr. Siddiqui, I've been an internal medicine physician for over a decade now. My primary area of practice was rural hospitals, I used to be in there. So I understood, understood the gaps in that market really, really well. Uh, one of the things that we you know, noticed over there was that these hospitals, they, they don't have the infrastructure or the money to support specialty physician care and they don't have the, the resources to support the technology. So when we were trying to address these issues, how do we get specialists to these small hospitals to provide better care? We were like, okay, uh, we have to do it through virtual because they, you know, no one's gonna pay them to be on, on site. And so, but when we, when we looked at all the virtual options out there, the technology is way too expensive for them to afford as well. So that's why we purposely decided to build our own platform, which was uh, extremely cost effective. And then we have our own large physician group with over seven to eight different specialties uh, that we provide to these hospitals. The idea is uh, to prevent patients from being transferred from these smaller hospitals to larger hospitals. Uh, we, don't, we don't plan to prevent 100% of them, but at least 30 to 40% uh, can be prevented if there's a specialist that's, man that's managing these patients virtually. Um, so we're a comprehensive digital health solutions company, tech implementation, as well as the physicians. Uh, we're in, uh, primarily, uh, we're not the, the telemedicine companies that are direct to cu customer or direct to patients. We are uh, primarily focused on hospitals, rehabs, uh, and outpatient clinics. That, that's what we, we serve. Um, and uh, I'll let uh, John take over. Oh, you want me to, I can, I can run through this real quick. Uh, we've had a pretty great last couple of years uh, and we had some uh, great traction and we couldn't have done it without, without our team. Uh, we've introduced uh, the, the C-suite and then we have our chief marketing officer, Lawrence, he's not here with us today. We have a chief medical officer, uh, he's uh, based out of Chicago as well, uh, Dr. Al Kabiri. And then uh, Ali uh, should be somewhere here as well. She's our director of virtual nurse practitioner program. We do wanted to make sure as well as physicians, we want to be leveraging uh, physician assistants as well as nurse practitioners. Um, and then we do have uh, uh, someone from Teladoc. He actually made Teladoc's technology. It's from InTouch, Ali Eichhorn. He's our chief uh, officer of innovations. And then with all of this, we wanted to make sure that we're you know, sticking to the boundaries of telemedicine. And so we have a director of telemedicine. He's Dr. Paul Bannock. He's a pulmonologist, but he's been with United Healthcare, so he kind of has set up our entire guideline on how to deliver telemedicine care. Uh, and then also we needed uh, a really, really strong legal uh, force, and uh, Andrew Hall is our chief legal officer. And so because of these guys, how, how, old, how long has Live Med Health been around? Uh, we, well, we actually started November of 2022. Wow. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, we started with a small little clinic on the outside of Chicago, and that was just to get the tech out there. And then, then we just... Uh, uh, based out of Chicago, Illinois. Based out of Chicago. Matter Company? We're a Matter Company, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And so Matter is our incubator. Uh, Matter's Pavilion is right next door for those who haven't visited. Tremendous resource for us, huge value for us, and especially as they mentored us to go to market, we've been able to work within that ecosystem and really leverage the resources collectively, just like we're doing it here at the, in this show. All right. Um, so yeah, so we've gotten some great traction. We've had some affiliations. We've uh, signed with some large groups, some large hospital groups. Um, and we've made some really good technological partnerships as well to kind of uh, skyrocket our growth. We wanted, our philosophy was, hey, uh, let's try to collaborate to grow faster. And uh, we've, been, we've, been, we've been having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, just a quick uh, overview on how we get started. Uh, I said, oh, well, I guess I said November. I said, okay, September 22. I take that back. September 22. Uh, we had our first hospital first go live in 2023. Uh, we signed a 50 hospital network in uh, Q3 of 2023. And then we were featured in Royal Business Chicago as one of the leading digital health companies uh, of 2024. Uh, and then uh, just a few months, a couple of months ago, uh, we signed um, another 50, greater than 50 hospital network and uh, we uh, launched our own uh, proprietary AI leveraged uh, clinical chat tool so our physicians can communicate with the hospitals that they provide service to. Uh, so it's been an action packed couple of years, guys. Um, John, you want to talk a little bit about the rural? Sure. I'll give it over to John. All right. Yeah. We can we can skip ahead if you, you want. want. No, no, we can home. we can yep. talk certainly about you know when you, if we think about rural healthcare um, and you know they're the people that are not represented here today at, at this show right they're, these are the people that are not part of big health systems they don't necessarily have the advantages of being able to to really take advantage of artificial intelligence or analytics or the technologies that big health systems have access to. So certainly, you know, from a telemedicine standpoint, we thought that, it, and when Dr. Stiki mentioned, how do we connect to, how do we connect our physicians with the rural healthcare market or community health systems, we, we knew that we needed to bridge the, the technology gap as well. And that's why we tried to make sure that we so, had the solution that was, was full encompassing the 360 degrees of, of need. Uh, but, but health systems, you know, they, they're, they're a lot of the rural houses, they're just trying to keep sustainability. Um, they're trying to make sure that they can survive. And that's their conversation day to day. It's not, hey, what, what's the next technology that we're going to get chase? It's more about how can we pay the, how do we, how do we make payroll? How do we keep our patients here? How do we just make sure quality is there? How do we recruit good nurses and physicians to our, to our market? So they have a really great challenge and we're just trying to be one, one piece of the, the solution uh, that maybe help them uh, survive. And, and certainly one of the things that's adding to their uh, challenge, and, and I think that'll be a challenge in the, in the near future for everyone, is that we expect that there'll be in the next 10 years, wh whether this number is totally accurate or not, a shortage of about 139,000 physicians. Now, whether it's 100, we've heard 100,000, we've heard 200,000. We know that the pipeline is, is is fixed, right? So there's there's very few new medical schools being built. So there's only so many physicians that can that can come into the market in any any given year. And yet there's more more physicians retiring than there are at being added. So we and of course then there's an aging population. So the the challenge, especially for for those community health systems, is how do you how do you get the resources these physicians that are needed into your community? And so we, we believe in the, in the future, and especially in the years to come, that the need for this type of service is going to continue to grow. So do you see this challenge essentially maintaining its trajectory, or do you see it even accelerating over the next couple of years? And then how are you as an organization uh, scaling with that? What's the uh, framework and plan? Yeah, I mean, I, I think certainly we're, we're, I think we're in, a, especially for as it relates to, to inpatient telemedicine, I think we're in its infancy and I think the demand is going to continue to grow. And, and I, I think once people experience, and we'll talk about a little bit one of our experiences in one of our hospitals that we're in, I think once it's, I, I kind of related to when my wife was, uh, was, we were trying to convince her that, hey, you're going on, a, you're traveling out of town, why don't you use Uber? 
and she said, well, no, I don't, I don't want to use Uber. That, that's crazy. You want me to get in some stranger's car and use an app? It's complicated. Of course, the first time they used it, she was like, oh my, I don't know how I live without it. And so, you know, I think it's the same thing with telemedicine. I think that the need is there. I think it's gonna, we're gonna see it continue to grow. The question is, is, at this point, is just how do we convince people that it is, a, it is a solid solution? And the more traction we're getting in the market, we're starting to see people come around. And, and I, think, I think this will be more prevalent in the years to come. Perfect. I'll just add a little bit to that. Um, one of the things that we're trying to address is access issues and how do we scale. Um, so the one thing is that virtual healthcare brings you is the ability for one physician to cover multiple hospitals concurrently. So you, you don't need to have, for three hospitals, you don't need to have three physicians covering three hospitals. You can have that one physician covering three hospitals. Uh, and to John's point about you know, the behavioral change, in the early, early days, uh, we had an advisor that, that reviewed our deck, made, you know, looked at our business plan, and, and he said, he completely you know, obliterated it, said this is not gonna work. He's like, in, in this rural market, he said basically that you're trying to sell cars when people are still riding horses. And so that was one of the biggest challenges of trying to get over the hump and uh, trying to sell them cars. It, and it, it's a lot of it, key education, establishing some clinical champions at these hospitals to get some adoption. Um, uh, and, and so uh, it's a very personable touch that you need to give these, these hospitals. They're very different from your urban corporate uh, run hospitals. For, from a technology perspective, there are unique challenges, right? But there are still uh, the same challenges that a lot of urban, suburban sort of hospital systems still face, right? In terms of technology, we'll talk a little bit, bit more about that in this afternoon. But just in terms of workflow and how we're addressing it, we're bringing in solutions to help our physicians become a lot more efficient. That's not exclusive to the uh, more uh, supported and uh, the, the, the metro sort of hospital systems. That is very, very uh, 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 similar in the challenges with, with rural hospitals. So we're looking at the workflow overall from, from the lens of an operational efficiency, but we're also um, revisiting a lot of AI-infused solutions, not for the sake of AI. We've been very, very purpose and prescriptive uh, and very specific about our AI applications, um, but nevertheless, those challenges are not so unique, and so a lot of the challenges that we see across rural America are, are very prevalent across the board. So uh, we, we talked about the, sort of this slide already and touched on it, but really the, the qu what we're trying to attempt is we package both our physician services with the technology. So if you use our physicians, you get our technology, and then that, again, that, that lowers, it bends the cost curve down for these for these hospitals that just don't have the capital to invest in the, in the technology. So th this is sort of our platform. We, we, we have our physician group uh, that Dr. Siddiqui mentioned that's about 55 physicians or so. Um, Virtualis is, our, is a technology we've developed for our internal use right now, um, but there's people that have talked to us about, hey, this is pretty cool, why don't, why don't you uh, market it separately, uh, which allows um, acuity-based uh, communication prioritization uh, via secure messaging platform. And then Emma is, our, is the carts that we built. Again, we, we built a very purposeful, low-cost cart for, for, the, uh, for our rural communities, again, to try to keep the cost down and, and allow us to wrap it within our services. And, and then, of course, our customers. So what, from, a, Oops, from our urban community, or rural community of users, What's been the feedback of the solution? Any barriers with the technology itself? Can you get, provide a little bit of insight on that? Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think so far, it, when we've showed people, when we've showed people technology pre-sale and as well as the use, um, I, I think they, they like it. It's very easy to use. They, they, they've been appreciative of how, how simple and intuitive it's been. Um, and I think so far we've been able to versus some of the larger health systems, because we are in some large health systems as well. Um, the, the, the world of working in the IT environment. Right? So how do, how do you get these cards securely on the, on the network? You know, the, the normal challenges that you face with, uh, you know, are, is the solution secure? Does it, you know, does it pass security muster? Uh, all of the normal things that, that we're, we're trying to uh, overcome. But, but so far, it's been, uh, the adoption's been great. We've, I think we've navigated all the challenges. It's, it's never easy working in health systems, as you, as, if, as you know. So, uh, but I, I think with 
with our ability to um, have kind of the right right skill sets with on our team. We've been able to and, and the right champions at the hospitals. We've been able to. to Overcome some and I, of the I think the frictionless aspect of the technology is paramount, right? We have to ensure that technology is not a bar barrier. And the case that I like to make is that if our clients, if our uh, uh, you know medical community is focused on healthcare and that's all they're talking about, after delivering that technology, then it means us as a technical organization have been incredibly successful because they are focused on what they need to do. And if technology becomes clunky or becomes an obstacle then all they're going to be talking about technology and that's problematic, right? So the best technology is the kind of technology you don't talk about, right? I'll add a little bit to that. Um, when we were designing the cart, because the end user was going to be nurses and, and medical assistants, we actually interviewed, uh, I would say about 40 to 45 nurses. And, you know, we wanted to see, was there a common theme? Because, you know, they're already really busy. We can't plug in more stuff into their workflows. And the, the one answer that was pretty common was just like, I, we want a big iPad and we want the physicians just available with just one click. And so that's exactly how we made it. There's a little bit of intimidation when they see this new technology, but once they start using it, you know, calling a couple of different docs a couple of different times, then, 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 then they love it. So um, it, it, it's really been... Do we want to talk about some of the results and some of the successes? Um, you know, within yeah. our pilot. And just so everyone knows, we are a tech startup, so we are continuing to learn. And so um, we're mature in some cases and we're humbled uh, in, in many others, uh, but we've already experienced uh, incredible stories as part of our uh, programs and pilots and the health systems that we have and the physician groups that we've engaged with have extended, right, um, uh, our, our engagement with them. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, one of the goals when we when we started the company is we said, well, if we can just get one or two customers within the first year, that would be great, right? That would that would that for many reasons. One, it would allow us to test our theory, um, but also would allow us a, to be in to tell stories, right? And and and, and sell, being able to to tell stories is really critical for us in terms and anybody for being able to convince people to sort of join you in in this journey. Uh, so certainly, as this, you know, we want to we we. we we have a goal of solving healthcare's, uh, rural healthcare's dilemma. Um, and so we already talked about sort of the, the, the traditionally, and, and some of it is just timing of the fact that in, in the world of telemedicine, specifically inpatient, um, it, it's in, the, in, in the, the, the companies that came out early, it was, it was a high cost. It was a, it was a, there was a barrier uh, to, to, in terms of the technology costs um, you know, and, and of course, the company's wanting to make money, and, and so, you know, sometimes it's it's better to be later in the game. You know, we we can, were able to leapfrog some of the challenges of the, the trailblazers in telemedicine were. So that's great that they helped us, um, but but certainly wanted to learn from them and some of the mistakes or or things that evolved over time. And so again, we we low cost of entry uh, is certainly key to our um, to our offering. And then, of course, you know, certainly there's lots of offerings. We again, our differentiation we're thinking again is is really trying to package both the the, the services and the technology at a low cost, at a very in a very efficient way, and trying to break down any barriers of complexity that come with trying to acquire our services. And then, of course, in terms of empowering rural hospitals, I mean, certainly, um, you know, what are we trying to do? We want to we want to Keep, we want to keep patients in those hospitals. One of the one of the challenges, certainly for them, is that when once once patients the complexity of care gets too much for them, they have to transfer the patients somewhere else. And and the problem is, is when the, in the rural market, if you have to transfer a patient somewhere for care, that could be two or three hours away from their home, which means they're two or three hours away from their family, their support structure. Their family now has the challenge of getting to them. Um, and, and of course, it comes with a high cost as well. So if we can, if these hospitals can keep patients in house, it's financially better for, for patients and the health system. And it's just better, it's better for, for care, it's better for the family, and so it's better for the community. So we, we think there's an important role here um, because if, just if we can keep one or two patients per month in the, ho in the hospital, in their community, that, that's a big deal. And, and of course, obviously, if we can keep the you know, make it a much safer and quality-driven uh, visit for those patients within the within the four walls of the hospital and acts and give the support to the structure that um, 
the, the health system already has in terms of their nurses and, their, and maybe their hospitalist or uh, mid-level providers, then we, we, we're that support structure for them. And so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our use case in, in one of our hospitals. In this case, it's, it's in Wisconsin. Um, and, and we'll talk about some of the results that we've seen in, in, in and what we've done, we measured from, we started with them in, in uh, we started with them last year, but we, we started, mo started the uh, measuring of our services in January. And so for over a six month period, we have some metrics that we can, we can certainly speak to in terms of um, our success there. I don't know if you want to talk sure, a little bit yeah, about Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll get through it. So, um, you, got, you want to skip the slide real quick? Yes. Uh, so we already talked about the issues. Um, uh, that uh, these rural hospitals have to implement this kind of technology. Uh, but what we noticed was that just having our specialists available virtually, um, we increased the reimbursements to the hospital by 74% from, from last year. Wow, just 74%. 74% because the fact that now they were not just seen by a primary care physician, they're also seen by a cardiologist, they're seen by a pulmonologist. And uh, um, the length of stay is something really important for hospitals. Um, the low, it has to be like a, like a sweet spot, below four, a little, little bit above 3.2, um, and that actually really, really helps in re hospital reimbursement. Um, and can you skip the slide a little more? And so basically, um, you know, we, we reduced about three patient transfers per month, and so that, that equated to about $30,000 to $40,000 for these hospitals in savings. And, and then with the, with the transfer savings, um, and then the increased reimbursement, uh, we, we projected about a one, over a million dollars in savings. Now, I know for the large health systems, one million dollars is a drop in the bucket, but for these smaller hospitals that only have a revenue of $50 million, that million dollars is gonna yeah. keep their lights open for a lot longer. So uh, they were thrilled, they're excited. Uh, I think we got featured in their news or something like that as well. So, uh, but yeah, that, those are the results that we're seeing so far. Yes. So, you know, certainly the, the, this hospital is part of a larger group um, that we're supporting. And, and so th this, this enables us, and Dan, being able to tell that story, they told their colleagues who told their colleagues. And so we're, we're, we're starting, we're heading into 10 more of their hospitals over the next six months. And then there, there's 50 hospitals total that make up this network. And we're hoping to get into everyone eventually um, if, if they'll let us. So uh, again, that, the power of, of storytelling, the power of metrics and, and being able to measure the, the actual outcome is, is really critical for us. Yeah, it, it's huge, right? And we, everything that we do has to be quantifiable. And so you can see from the visual here that obviously it translates into numbers. One of the stories that we wanted to share with you is this patient, I think we we might not have audio, but do you want to share uh, uh, yes, his story? Uh, is out of Arizona? Yep. Oh, there's no volume. Uh, so that's yeah. Bart. Oh, that's actually that's our patient yeah. zero, the first patient that was ever seen using our tech, using our physicians. And uh, I wish you could see what he was saying because the way he said that he was so thankful, so appreciative that it, to, to them in these communities, they were like, you know, dumbfounded. They're like, wow, there's a specialist actually seeing me when I come to the hospital. And so uh, it, it, it was a really nice. It was a really nice feeling. I, I think his specific quote was, "I can't believe I'm sitting here in undisclosed yeah. location," uh, and essentially he said, "I'm seeing the best of breed of a certain kind of doctor, right?" Uh, and so that's very powerful. That one line right there is gives us purpose, right? It motivates us, but obviously it really brings home the value proposition of really being able to provide access to these communities that otherwise would not vis-a-vis -vis our technology and of course the framework of our solution and of course the magnitude of healthcare that we certainly enjoy living closer to certain communities, more denser communities. And so I wanted to share that story that, that really brought it home. Um, we are at a point right now where we actually can take questions to our packed audience. Uh, so um, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free and I can repeat the question for the uh, viewership community that's not here. We're good? All right. Okay, guys. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you, guys. Take care.